Hello everyone. Welcome back to my Ozology class. Now, uh, last class we talked about the cell cycle, right? We talked about the various stages of cell cycle like the interphase, the M phase and the cytokinesis. Besides that, we also talked about mitosis. You, you know about mitosis, right? That is also called equation of division. Now, today we are going to talk about meiosis. When you look at, when you look at the M phase, sorry, this, there's supposed to be an A. When you look at the M phase, it is further divided into mitosis and meiosis. Remember that meiosis is again divided into phase one and phase two. So today, in today's class, we are going to focus on meiosis one. Okay. Why are they divided into one and two? Because the chromosomes, the chromosomes work in a different way. Remember that. It is mainly focused on the chromosomes where they are going to work in a different way as compared to meiosis 2. Remember that. When you talk about meiosis, it is also called what? Reductional division. That means it is you are going to talk about the sperm and egg of a living being. Remember that where the number of chromosomes become half. Okay. That means from a diploid living organism, the cell will become haploid. That is only one. Remember that. So we are going to focus today on meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, just like, or just like we talked about mitosis. But it does, the structure of chromosome is different. In case of prophase 1 also, the most important part in meiosis is Prophase 1 is again divided into the leptotin, zygotin, pecaitin, diplotin, and dikinesis. L E P T O T E N E, leptotin. Z Y G O T E N E, zygotin. P A C H Y T E N E, pecaitin. D I P L O T E N E, diplotin. And dikinesis, D I A K I N E S I S, dikinesis. This stage is the most important one, okay? This is the this is this is actually the stage where the cells become haploid in number by dividing the number of chromosomes. So now we are going to focus on meiosis 1. In meiosis 1 under prophase, the first stage is the leptotin stage. Remember that. When you look at the leptotin stage, the chromosomes when they are coiled up slowly slowly they start forming strands remember that ribbon shaped structure these chromosomes they become shortened and become single stranded that means only one strand besides this in leptonin stage what you will observe is that nucleolus is still present and always remember okay in prophase one then nuclear membrane will always be there remember that and as you know this is the centriole after the leptodin stage where the chromosomes become short and ribbon type of shape the next stage comes that is called the zygotin stage in the zygotin stage what will happen is that two you can see two two cro shortened chromosomes right these two shortened chromosomes were called what in previous class it was called chromatid, right? So this chromatid, what will happen is that the same type of chromosomes, they are called homologous, H-O-M-O-L-O-G-O-U-S. They are called homologous chromosomes. We are deployed in number right now. So obviously there will be two same type of chromosomes. So these two same type of chromosomes called homologous chromosomes which have now become a chromatid will join together come together and align together okay this aligning and joining together is by the process of synapses that means they synapse together remember that this this process of the chromatid synapsing together is called the synaptonemal complex remember that S Y N A P T O N E M A L synaptonemal complex. Besides this, you will see that there are centromeres present. After that, 
they will they will first they will pair up you will see that the nucleus are still there so after that will come the next stage the next stage is called the pectin in case of pectin the most important part you should know is that the chromatids of homologous chromosomes they twist around each other okay they they hug and twist around each other in which it now says it says that chromosomes of homologous pair these two pair become twisted around each other as a result of which crossing over takes place that means the strands they cross over each other so th there's a specific reason why they're crossing each other okay so in this pectin stage you will observe that the centrioles are slowly moving to the poles besides this the nucleus is slowly disappearing remember that after this pectin stage where crossing over of the uh, so chromatid strands will happen what will happen is that the next stage will come called the diplotin stage in diplotin stage you will see this this particular diagram see you will see an x type of diagram the sister chromatids these are the sister chromatids okay but in order for you to understand much better we i'm just showing one part of the chromatid of the sister chromatid to show how they're twisted around each other okay but actually they have already formed the sister chromatid so in diplotin stage what is the first thing that you see the first thing that you will see is that the nuclear membrane are slowly disappearing right besides this the centrals are moving to the opposite poles and then beside that what happened there is dissolution of synaptonemal complex what do you mean by dissolution of synaptonemal complex that means the complex of pairing together the chromatids pairing together disappears that means they start moving away when they start moving away they are in contact with each other at only specific points okay like forming a cross type of structure this cross type of structure where they are only touching each other at that particular uh, junction that cross type structure is x shaped structure and they that particular name is called chiasmata c h i a s m a t a chiasmata remember that at this diplodin stage you will see that the sister uh, the the cro homologous cro uh, chromosomes chromatids they are just crossing each other in certain specific portions only it, now comes the next stage the most important stage that is the dikinesis in dikinesis what will happen is that the centrioles move to the poles that is what will happen in dikinesis at the later age of stage of dikinesis besides that the, there is terminalization of chiasmata that means the x portion that is holding the chromatids together they will go away okay they will tear away so what will happen is that in this case the, the nuclear membrane will completely disappear okay remember that which will lead to the next phase called the metaphase one you know right prophase after prophase is metaphase so now comes the metaphase one where the nuclear membrane will completely disappear now the centrioles have moved to the poles right that means the opposite end of the cell, cell it may be this side or it may be this side okay remember that they have to be opposite that's all so opposite end of the poles the centrioles are already there now you will see the spindle fiber right the spindle fiber is whole, goes and holds these chromatids see homologous uh, homologous chromosome chromatids in the middle so last class we talked about the chromosomes staying in the middle right what are they called in the middle part it is called equatorial plate right so this bivalent chromosome bi means two okay two there are two junctions bivalent chromosomes are aligned at the equatorial plate that means they will come in the middle after that arms of chromatid point inward what do you mean by arms of chromatid point inward the chroma uh, the chromatids will be actually pointing inward remember that like this okay so they are pointing inward at this stage where and this in case of metaphase one the nuclear membrane completely disappears which takes us to the next stage called
the <coughs> anaphase. phase. In case of anaphase, now you see a very, very different diagram, right? In case of anaphase, when you look at the chromatids, what do you observe? When you look at the chromatids, you will see different color, right? I've already shaded black and red. So the black type of chromatid will be having a small portion of the red portion of chromatid or the colored portion. In case of the red one also, they will be having small portion of the black chromatid, which indicates that they have exchanged their chromatid portion. So when they exchange the chromatid portion, what will happen? They will exchange their genetic material, right? When they exchange their genetic material, now the gene composition will no longer be similar to the parent. That means now they will not have the same type of gene as compared to the father or the mother. Remember that that's the reason why even though uh, even the father and mother, even though they give birth also, they do not come out. The kids do not come out as clones, right? They have they have the, their uh, the looks also, the character also. It may be different, especially the looks and all. It does not come out as the exact clone of a father or it does not come out as the exact clone of a mother. So that is because the genes get mixed up in the chromatids. Remember that. In case of anaphase 1, what will happen? There is, there is the pulling of the chromatids. Last class, we talked about the, uh, the spindle fiber, right? So the chromatids will be pulled back to the poles by the spindle fibers. How? by the process of shortening of spindle fibers. That means the spindle fibers will become shorter and shorter and will pull the chromatids, okay? So what, basically, what is the main aim? The main aim is to divide these two, okay? Divide these two, making it into a haploid structure. Remember that haploid means single, remember that. So in anaphase one, this, so these chromatids where there is no splitting of central mirror. That means the middle portion, okay? Last, uh, last, cl last class, we talked about mitosis. Where the, you talked about mitosis where there was this middle portion of sister chromatids, right? Where this is the middle portion, this is the central mirror. Where there is an attachment here, two attachment called kinetochore. So during mitosis, it was, it was broken down into two. Right, but in this case, in case of anaphase one, the centromere will not break up. Okay, it will not divide into two. Remember that. After that comes the telophase stage. In telophase stage, at first the 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 cytoplasm will be joined together like this. Okay, the cytoplasm will be joined, and then slowly, slowly, the nu two nuclear membrane will start coming out. After it slowly comes out, these two nuclear membranes slowly comes out, it will, it will break up and then form a haploid cell. You know what is haploid, right? That means it is single. So in case of telophase stage, what you observe is that the, chrom the, say, the chromatids gets divided into two in which now they have a proper form cytoplasm. Remember that. Now there are two cells which is haploid in number. That means N in number. Okay. Before it was 2N in number. But now it has become N in number. N in number is called haploid. Single. Remember that. Okay. So they have become single in number which is due to in the but besides that they're due to crossing over the chromat chromatids are not identical like i told you before now the chromatids slowly begin to uncoil that means after it forms this uh, sister chromatids portion what will happen slowly it will go back to its original structure of uncoiling of the genetic material this uncoiling of the genetic material, now this chromatid is called what? Now this chromatid is called the, what is it called now? This chromatid is now called the chromosome. Okay, remember that. So in, the, in, telo, in, telophase, in telophase 1, you will see that now they are composed of two cells which is haploid in number <coughs> and then they have the centrals present and what comes back? 
the most prominent one, the nuclear membrane. Besides the nuclear membrane coming back, you will see the nucleolus also coming back. There will be two nucleolus, there will be two nuclear membrane, <coughs> excuse me, and then now there will be two cells, remember that. <coughs> now, after this um, telophase, telophase, telophase 1, they will move to meiosis 2, okay, but this meiosis 2 will be studying in the next class. What is mainly the most important uh, characteristics of meiosis? Why is it important? It is important because we need haploid number of chromosomes from the father and haploid number of chromosomes from the mother, right? You cannot have two, two uh, you know that a uh, human being is composed of 23 pairs. <coughs> Remember that, <coughs> 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23 pairs means two two pairs it will be similar so when it becomes half that means half you'll take from the father half you'll take from the mother the chromosomes when you put together it will come to 23 pairs that's the reason why it is very important for the ovary or the sperm to be <coughs> to be haploid remember that okay so that this uh, we'll speak about we'll talk about well, meiosis 2 we'll learn about meiosis 2 next class so that's all for today's class and see you next class.